Don't get me wrong, you won't get rich overnight, but if you're just starting out or have some experience investing, then today's video is for you. Today, I'll be showing you how to make passive income in your sleep with $1,000. Hi, I'm Gabrielle, a CPA and tax expert. Here on my channel, I make videos on everything money, from investing to saving to budgeting and even tax tips. I recently quit my nine to five and started my own tax practice called Balance and Wealth CPA and also share my journey on entrepreneurship. Today, I'll be sharing with you five ways to make money passively and introduce some unique investment funds that may be new to you. So let's get started. Passive income stream number one, dividend stocks. You may have heard of dividend stocks, but how do they differ from regular stocks? I'll be giving you a quick rundown as well as use a specific company as an example to show you what to look for when picking dividend stocks. Just to make sure everyone is on the same page, investing in stocks essentially means that you become an owner of a company, but at a teeny percentage. By being an owner and hence an investor, you would expect to see returns on your initial investments in two ways. First, through dividend payments, and second, through capital appreciation. Dividends are declared by the company and paid out from the company's after-tax profits. Capital appreciation is when the stock price of the company goes up and you get to profit by pocketing the difference between your initial investment and the increase in the share price. Profitable does not mean dividends. Now, not all companies pay out dividends. A distinguishing factor among established tech companies is that even if they are profitable and have lots of cash, they choose not to pay out dividends, but instead invest back into the company. So for example, Google is a big company that we all know of and that is profitable. In fact, Google has cash and cash equivalent of $139.6 billion and does not pay dividends to its shareholders. However, these sort of stocks have other passive income potentials such as capital appreciation. What to look for in a dividend stock? On the other hand, there are well-established companies that are known to pay out consistent dividends over many years and even several decades. Here in Canada, the energy sector is a big part of our economy and an example that I'll be using is a well-known Canadian company called called Enbridge. This company has been paying dividends for 67 years with a compound annual growth rate of 10% over the last 27 years. So while the energy sector tends to be volatile, Enbridge claims that they have a low risk business model with long-term contracts and fixed fees, which results in predictable cash flows. The current dividend yield is 6%. So if you invest $1,000, you could expect to receive around $60 in dividends annually. Enbridge said that it expects to place around $10 billion of projects into service this year, which will help increase its distributable cash flows between 5 and 7% through 2023. Keep in mind, past distributions do not guarantee future dividends, but past distributions can be a decent indicator of future payouts. I'm also not recommending you to invest in Enbridge. This is simply an example in which I wanted to walk you through what to look for when you do research on stocks. We just talked about the dividends. How about the share price? In the past five years, Enbridge's share price fluctuated from a low of $36 to $37 up to a current high of around $57. The all-time high price was back in 2015 of around $65. So keep in mind that the price of the underlying stock might fluctuate, but if you prioritize receiving consistent dividend amounts over a stretch of time, the price fluctuations of the stock might not be as big of a deal to you. Choose an investment strategy that best suits you, whether that is investing in blue chip companies known for consistent dividend payouts or companies that have high growth potential for capital appreciation, but don't necessarily pay out dividends. The miracle of compounding. Now, now, let's see how passively you can let your income grow for you. Let's say that you invested $1,000 in a dividend stock that produces a 6% yield. You're going to let your investment run on autopilot through a dividend reinvestment plan, also known as DRIP, with your brokerage of your choice. This means that even your dividend payments get reinvested in the same stock, which then increases your initial investments and dividend payments will be paid on that increased amount. You can see that by the end of 10 years, you will have more than an 80% return without lifting a finger. Of course, this takes a few factors into consideration, such as the stock value and dividend yield not changing, and that you'll be investing in a tax-free account, such as a TFSA. 
However, we can assume to some extent that stocks and dividend yields for blue chip companies will most likely increase over a long stretch of time, and that would provide you with even better returns. To grow your portfolio even faster, contribute a little bit of money every month to see your returns grow exponentially. Compounding not only works for stocks, but for other investments like ETFs and split funds, which we'll be talking about next. Before we dive in, if you're looking for a brokerage in Canada to invest your money, I personally like to use Questrade to invest for my TFSA and RSP account. Questrade has low fees and advanced features such as Drip, so feel free to use my link below to get $50 of free stock trades with a minimum of $1,000 portfolio. Passive income stream number two, ETFs and split funds. An exchange traded fund, also known as an ETF, is a basket of securities that often tracks an index such as the S&P TSX in Canada or the S&P 500 in the US. ETFs are a convenient way to invest since you could invest in hundreds of stocks by simply investing in one ETF. You also have the added benefit of diversifying your investments since one ETF can hold stocks in various industries and can also have lower trading fees. There are ETFs to suit different investor needs. There is an ETF that focuses just on high dividend paying companies to investments that focus on trends such as innovation companies and even leveraged ETFs for investors with higher risk appetites who are willing to bet on a bear or bull market. Split share funds. Another type of fund with a unique investment structure is a split fund. They typically hold a basket of high quality dividend paying companies and have two classes of shares, a preferred share and a class A share. A preferred share investor is more conservative investor that receives a steady dividend and usually see their initial investment back at the end. They don't generally experience gains or, or losses and have priority over class A shares when receiving their dividends. On the other hand, the class A shares takes part in potentially higher rewards for taking on higher risk. For one, class A is subject to all the gains and losses in the underlying investments and receives only the excess dividends and income left over in the portfolio. However, if the price of the underlying stock goes up due to this leveraged structure, that return will will be magnified for class A investors as they will also benefit from the gains attributable to the preferred shareholders. As an example, one split fund I'm investing in is the Dividend 15 Split Corp, ticker symbol DFN. I bought when prices dipped at 100 shares for around $800 and currently receive $10 in monthly dividends as a class A shareholder. That's a 15% annualized yield, which I would say is not too bad. If you are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit the like button down below as it would mean a lot to me. Now let's continue on to passive income stream number three, real estate investment trust. If you want to diversify your investments and want to delve into real estate without locking in a big chunk of change, you could also look into real estate investment trusts, also short for REIT. Benefit of investing in REITs is that it could truly be passive and you don't need to deal with picky tenants, leaky pipes, and broken laundry machines for repair. You simply need to find a real estate market that you want to invest in and put down as little as $20 per share and be a real estate investor and receive dividends. REITs mostly receive rental income from their investments in residential buildings to commercial and retail properties. They are then obligated to distribute 90% of their taxable income to shareholders annually in the form of dividends. An example of a REIT that invests in the Canadian real estate market is BMO's Equal Weight REIT Index ETF, ZRE, which doesn't just invest in one REIT, but 24 REITs with around 4 to 5% holdings in each REIT. This provides added diversification to your portfolio by investing in different sectors such as retail, residential, industrial, office, healthcare, and so on. For dividends, the annualized distribution yield is 4.3%. 4% as of May 13, 2022, and you can even benefit from the appreciation and real estate market in the long run. Passive income stream number four, earning interest or staking crypto. Another form of diversification may be in crypto. I know that crypto is going through some turbulent times and for those holding, you know, hang in there. But if you are simply holding crypto and riding up the storm, you can earn interest income while you are holding. I personally hold 
some of my crypto in Nexo, which you can earn up to 16% on cryptos and 12% on stable coins and fiat currency like the US dollar. I personally earn between 4.5 to 5.5% on my cryptos. So I just set it and forget it. And if you're interested, feel free to use my link below for $25 in Bitcoin if you transfer $100. Passive income stream number five, GIC versus HISA versus bonds. If you're looking for a relatively safe way to park your money as you save up for something in the short term, the safest way to invest is through guaranteed investment certificates, also known as GICs, or even high interest savings accounts, short for HISA. For both of these investments, you don't need to worry about losing your principal, but you also don't get that great of a return compared to the investments that I've previously mentioned. Higher interest rates also mean higher rates for your GIC and savings accounts. Apparently, there are some banks that are providing upwards of 3.45% for GICs. So just keep that in mind and do your own research to see which banks and which rates work best for you. Another thing to look out for are that GICs can be redeemable or non-redeemable, which means that there are fixed terms and you might not get any interest if you happen to withdraw your money earlier than the fixed term. High interest savings account can also be an option, but returns will be measly. There are banks that are now providing more than 1%. If you are saving up for an emergency fund, it would be better than just letting your cash sit in your checking account, which you will be earning 0% on. Due to inflation, we can expect to see interest rates increase further this year, which also means higher returns on GICs and savings accounts. Bonds can be considered safer investments, but also don't provide that great of a yield either. Per Bank of Canada, the yields as shown here seem to be all under 3%. Also keep in mind that there is often an inverse relationship between higher interest rates and bond yields. So as interest rates continue to go up, you could also expect bond yields to go down. If you found this video useful and want another video on how to make money passively with some work but have huge upside potential, then make sure to thumbs up this video to show me that you are interested. In the meantime, feel free to check out my other videos listed here and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!